Welcome back to the channel. A uh, little different video again today. I'm going to be talking about a new acquisition that I got around Labor Day weekend. Uh, this is a uh, hot air engine, Sterling engine, uh, external combustion engine. There it goes by many names. Uh, it was uh, something that was uh, developed in the very early 1800s and it was kind of a answer to the uh, catastrophic failures that boilers were having around the the turn of the 1800s. Um, they just weren't very safe. Uh, steam engines weren't very safe and uh, caused a lot of loss of life. So this is an alternative to that. Uh, it was developed as a safe engine that ran at very low pressures and uh, was just uh, very simple to run. Um, so it didn't really take off because of uh, the fact that this engine probably weighs 1100 pounds and it only makes maybe half a horsepower <clears throat> so it's not very uh, uh, power dense um, also they're complex to make um, a lot of tight tolerance machining that wasn't done at the time very well so uh, uh, we're going to go over this engine here in a little bit but first uh, we'll take a look at what a sterling engine is and kind of how it works There are three main types of Stirling engines, but they all work on the same principle. A gas, when heated, expands. When it's cooled, it contracts. It's this characteristic of expanding and, and contracting gas in a confined area that makes workable power generated by the Stirling engine. The first type of Stirling engine is an alpha engine. It has two pistons that are sealed to their respective cylinders and it has the highest uh, horsepower to volume ratio of all the Stirling engines. Um, it is plagued with uh, seal problems on the hot side of the engine, but uh, other than that it's a pretty simple design. Second type of engine is a gamma engine where there's a displacer cylinder with a piston inside that is not sealed to the cylinder, it's just uh, very close tolerance and it moves the air from the hot to cold side of the engine and then there's a smaller power piston that uh, takes advantage of the pressure differential caused by the expansion and contraction of the working gas. Here's another orientation of the gamma engine showing kind of the crazy linkage that you need to pull this off. Um, it also shows the clearance uh, there of the displacer cylinder a little more clearly. Third type of engine is a beta style engine where the displacer and the power piston are in the same cylinder. Uh, there are some challenges with this uh, construction because one of the connecting rods has to pass through one of the moving pistons. This is the style engine that my engine is. So I'm kind of zoomed in here a little closer now. Um, this thing's not quite six feet tall and it's on a cart that isn't correct. Um, it should be bolted to a skid, so I'll have to build a skid. Uh, so we'll just zoom in here and kind of look at this linkage. This is a beta type. Uh, you remember there were the three types, alpha, gamma, beta. This one is a beta where it has the displacer and the power piston in the same cylinder. Um, that caused for some machining tolerance problems uh, because you got the center connecting rod for the bottom displacer uh, has to run through the power piston that's on the top. So <clears throat> um, there are some things that aren't correct on this engine, specifically this hammer arrangement here. Look, hammer looking thing, it was an extra weight. Uh, that's not original. Uh, the bracketing up here that held the uh, exhaust uh, flue is not original. Um, <clears throat> there is one crack on, and weld on this uh, walking beam. Uh, that's pretty standard. Um, 
the castings there in this time frame, which this is going to be uh, early 1880s to no later than somewhere in the 1890s. The castings just weren't very good, so uh, it's not surprising that there's been some breaks and welds. Uh, I think this is a relatively early engine uh, because of the fact that all this linkage here is brass. Uh, these connectings, connecting rods here and stuff are brass. Um, so that makes it pretty early. Plus it's got a really neat uh, curved spoke flywheel. Flywheel is 29 inches in diameter. And uh, it is an eight inch uh, engine, which means that the piston, the power piston is eight inches in diameter. It maybe makes half a horsepower at about 80 RPM. So real low RPM, real low power output. Um, <clears throat> and this one does not have a, Ryder Erickson tag on it, which that's what this design was. Um, but it doesn't have that on it, which makes it kind of uh, uh, unique. And uh, usually down here at the bottom, there was a, uh, a tag that said Ryder Erickson on it, and then it was re remanufactured uh, through or re redistributed through another um, uh, manufacturer. So this is a John. Let's see if I can read the tag here. Uh, it says John Demarest, and it was in uh, New York, so that's who uh, marketed it and sold it. It's got a nice brass tag on there, but that's the only identifications it's got. So I'll roll it over, and you can see how complex this linkage is. Um, this this rod that's going up here is the displacer, so it's moving the air to the bottom of the cylinder, which would be the hot side. So it's moving the air down, and then the power piston starts moving up because the air has been expanding, and then that rod drops very quickly, and it's pushing the air up to the top side because this is a water jacket, and this is the cold side. So now the piston goes back down because the air has been contracting, and that's kind of the cycle. So that's how it runs. Uh, pretty complex linkage to figure out with no computers or anything. Uh, so this, this engine would have pumped water out of a cistern uh, to a tank that would have been on the top of a house and then uh, a mansion, probably a big house. And then the house would have had running water that way. So th this would have ran by itself for a long time and it would have run off of coal and um, I'll move the camera so we can get a little different view of uh, some, some parts here. So here's a little different view, a um, couple of yellow pieces here. Um, <clears throat> this is the water pump. So this would pull in water from the cistern and then pump it up to the top of the house. Um, I think it pulls it in the bottom and then pushes it out through the, the through this uh, water jacket and out the other side. I, th I think that's the outlet. Um, this yellow piece down here is the firebox. So you'd build a fire in there with uh, um, coal and then it would heat this bottom side. There's a, a piece that hangs down in there and that would be the bottom side. That's the hot side of the engine. So, <clears throat> um, and this is an accumulator. Um, there's one on the inlet and one on the outlet and what that would do is there'd be an air bubble in here and this pump when it when it pumps is going to surge and make some vibration and these long pipes running up the side of the house um, it would make some noise in the house so these uh, smoothed that flow out and kind of dampened that pulsing sound. Um, this little tube here is a bleed for the packing, so if any water gets past the packing, it can drain out of the uh, the pump. But uh, like I said, this thing uh, ran by itself a lot, so it's not surprising that there's some wear in in like the pins and and connecting pins and stuff like that that I'll have to address. Also, the grates in the uh, uh, firebox are kind of like what's a grate that's in a charcoal grill. I'm going to have to make some of those because those were deteriorated really bad. Uh, and then I've stated I'll have to make a base for it because this cart arrangement's not, not correct at all. 
the color is not correct. It shouldn't be blue. Uh, most likely was either a uh, antique black or a bright red. So I'll have to research that a little bit more, but there just isn't a lot of information on these engines. Um, so it's really hard to uh, find information about them. So uh, a lot of it's just left up to what you think looks right. Um, but anyway, uh, pick this one up. It's kind of an odd, uh, odd thing. It doesn't fit the, uh, what I usually have, which is gasoline engines, but I've always wanted one of these. And uh, so now I have one. So I uh, got it as a project and I'll be working on it on and off here in the shop over the winter. Um, uh, we're still working on the eight horse mogul. I have not forgot about that. I need to make the final spring. That'll be in an upcoming video. And then another interesting video is I have a, a restoration of a, a double ended crescent wrench uh, that I have that's been soaking in oil and wintergreen for about six months. So a couple of videos coming up. So. Uh, like and subscribe if you like the channel content. I try to put out uh, content when I have time. I have a full-time job, so um, this takes a lot of time to do this, but I sure enjoy doing it. And uh, please leave a comment, like and subscribe, like I said, because um, that that uh, is kind of fun to hear from everybody. And then also it gives me input on what kind of videos uh, have the most activity and what everybody likes to see. Um, some of this stuff uh, is kind of boring, and I realize that, but it's part of the restoration process. Um, some of it is quite interesting, but uh, some of it's uh, just pretty boring. So anyway, well, thanks for watching, and um, thanks for looking at my new engine.